Hey, happy World Poetry Day. Today is World Poetry Day and April is Poetry Month next month. So I'm getting my poetry groove on and I'm thinking about how important poetry is in my life and in the world. Um, I often talk about the importance of reading aloud to children daily and we, it doesn't always have to be books. It's important to expose children to lots of different kinds of readings. Read folk tales, read fantasy, read memoir, read nonfiction, uh, read how-to books, and read poetry. Um, I have lots of favorite poetry books for children. I enjoy Shel Silverstein poems. I think for the very young children, nursery rhymes are very helpful for building an ear for language. Just be careful of which ones you use. And for three to six year olds, I have a huge collection of poems I love and use in my teaching. My favorite poetry collection for three to six year olds is Honey I Love by Eloise Greenfield. It is incredible. Um, I mean, I would like to just sit here and read the entire book to you cover to cover because every single word in it is a gem and something children can relate to. Ah, but I'll just read a couple things. Um, so the first poem is titled the same as the title of the collection, Honey, I Love. And it's hard for me to read part of a poem and not an entire poem, but this one's a little longer, so buckle up. Honey, I love. I love, I love a lot of things, a whole lot of things, like my cousin comes to visit and you know he's from the South because every word he says just kind of slides out of his mouth. I like the way he whistles and I like the way he walks, but honey, let me tell you, that I love the way he talks. I love the way my cousin talks. And the day is hot and icky and the sun sticks to my skin. Mr. Davis turns the hose on. Everybody jumps right in. The water stings my stomach and I feel so nice and cool. Honey, let me tell you that I love a flying pool. I love to feel a flying pool. And Renee comes out to play and brings her doll without a dress. I make a dress with paper and that doll sure looks a mess. We laugh out loud and long and hard. The doll falls to the ground. Honey, let me tell you that I love the laughing sound. I love to make the laughing sound. And my uncle's car is crowded and there's lots of food to eat. We're going down the country where the church folks like to meet. I'm looking out the window at the cows and trees outside. Honey, let me tell you that I love to take a ride. I love to take a family ride. And my mom is on the sofa sewing buttons on my coat. I go and sit beside her. I'm through playing with my boat. I hold her arm and kiss it because it feels so soft and warm. Honey. Let me tell you that I love my mama's arm. I love to kiss my mama's arm. And it's not so late at night, but I'm lying in my bed. I guess I need to rest because at least that's what my mama said. She told me not to cry because she didn't want to hear a peep. Honey, let me tell you, I don't love to go to sleep. I do not love to go to sleep but i love i love a lot of things a whole lot of things and honey i love you too and i had marked so many it's really hard for me to put this book down i want to read the entire thing cover to cover again and again and again and again if you don't own this book yet Go to your local bookstore and get it. So please read poetry to your kids, not just today, World Poetry Day, but please read poetry to your kids often. And not only do we want to 
read poetry to our children, but we also want to encourage them to write it even before they're writing words, they're speaking words, and with their speech, they're writing poetry. Children are natural poets. The world seen through a child's eyes is often poetry. The words a child naturally uses are often poetry. So collect your child's words and hang on to them. They're precious. When your child says something poetic, tell them that is beautiful language and save it. Write it down and hang on to those precious words or I promise you'll forget them. As a classroom teacher, I used to do this with my students. I had a bulletin board up and at the top of it, at the top it said beautiful language. And I would collect beautiful language. Whenever a student said something that I considered beautiful language, I would say to them, that is beautiful language. And I would write it down and hang it up on the bulletin and read it to the class. Well, the more attention we give to something, the more we get of it. So because I paid so much attention to beautiful language, I was able to get a lot of beautiful language from my students. And when we started writing poetry, they had all of that beautiful language to inspire them. And it wasn't just other people's words, it was their own. I did this with my children too. When my children, uh, say beautiful things, I'll, I'll say that is beautiful language. And they would even start saying it back to me when I would say something, mama, that is beautiful language. So I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite um, pieces of beautiful language from one of my kids. This is from my oldest, who's now 15. They'll be 16 in just two weeks. And when they were four, he, um, looked up at the moon and the stars and he called it the chandelier in the sky. I am sure that your children have said beautiful language as well and I would love to hear it. So please share with me your, ch your child's beautiful language. Write it down and let me know. My child said some beautiful language today or here is some beautiful language from my child. Share it. Let's all celebrate beautiful language today, World Poetry Day, and every day, because poetry is all about using words to evoke emotion. Poetry is about beautiful language. So it's not always rhyming, but it's always beautiful language. I will talk to you guys soon. I love you. Keep singing.